Have you recently done some night photography but find that your images just lack a little bit of punch? Would you like to be able to give your night photos and cityscapes a wow factor? Then all you need is two tools. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video I'm going to show you the two specific tools that I use in Luminar Neo to punch up my night photography. So if you're ready, let's get started. I've opened this image from Lightroom into Luminar Neo as a plugin. That's my particular workflow. So I've already done the basic edits to the raw file in Lightroom. And now I want to just add a little bit more punch. The first tool that you need to use on your night photos is Color Harmony. I've added it to my favorites at the top here. If you don't see it there, you'll find it at the bottom under Professional. If you want to add it to your favorites, you could just right click and choose Add to Favorites. I've already done that, so I'm just going to open the Color Harmony tool and go to the second box down, Color Contrast. Just open the tab if you don't see these sliders. Take the amount slider up to about 25 or 30. You'll start to see the image change a little bit. This is where the magic happens. Now you need to adjust the hue slider. Watch as I drag it through the color spectrum and see how the image changes. If I'm over this area of the rainbow, the blue and purple tones, you can see that it's lightening the sky and darkening the opposite colors or yellows. If I am over the yellow, you can see that it is brightening the city lights and darkening the blues or the sky. So you need to pick the right hue to create the effect that you want for this image to make it pop more. If I want to emphasize the city lights, this is the right choice. If I want to make the sky pop a little more and minimize the lights, this is the right choice. So there is no right or wrong, you get to decide. I've settled on somewhere in the 90 range for hue and 37 on the amount slider. You can see the before and after but we're not done with this tool yet. Open the next section down, Split Color Warmth. These sliders allow you to adjust the tones of the warm colors and the cool colors separately. So you can choose to make the warm colors, in this case, the yellow and the red lights, even warmer. Or if you want to neutralize them a little bit, you could go the opposite way. See how that neutralizes the yellow? Same with the cool slider. You can take the blues more towards blue, or you can make the sky a bit more purple. I like it this way. Again, I'm gonna settle somewhere in the middle. Check another before and after. I toggle the tool on and off frequently while I am editing. It allows me to see what I've done so far and determine whether or not I need to go farther or if I've done too much. If your colors are getting a little bit too punchy or too saturated, use the Brilliant slider and just take it down a little bit to the left. You can also use this one to add more warmth to the right, which is yellow, or blue to the left. Let's take it to extremes and just see what it does. This one here is really neutralizing the colors on the road. So if I want to focus on the sky and the city, I think this is a good choice. Going the opposite direction, it's sort of turning a little bit green and the sky is sort of a weird color. So I like a little bit cool, but not too far. Once again, a before and after. See how much contrast it's adding? And we haven't touched a single contrast slider. You can also use this bottom section here if you want. I will touch it on occasion. For example, if I wanna take the highlights and make them a bit more yellow again. That will affect the city lights. Or if I want to make the shadows more blue, that will affect the sky and the water. So overall, this tool does a lot because we're dealing with colors that are complementary or opposite on the color wheel. In this case, blue and yellow or orange. The second tool that you want to use is in the Essentials section, and that is simply the Color Tool. There's a lot of great things here, including the HSL panel, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, which is also Brightness. 
The first slider I want to bring to your attention is the Remove Color Cast. If you have an odd tint in your image, taking this one up to the right will help correct it, but I find that it also tends to add a bit of contrast and darkness. So in particular, on a night photo, that can work to your favor really well. See how it's adding that just a little bit more contrast and punch? So I'm going to add this one to about plus 10. Down in the HSL section, I'm going to choose Luminance from the pull down menu. This is where I can now adjust the brightness. If I want to bring the light down a bit more or brighten them, I can do that with the yellow slider. Let's darken them a little bit. I can also brighten the blues and you can see it's bringing out the sky and the water again. Likewise, we can also affect the saturation. So if we want more red in the red lights, we can have more red or I can say I want more blue in the sky. Likewise, you can dial it down if it's gone too far. I'm happy with that. The last option here is hue. This actually allows you to shift the color. So if you would like the sky to be more purple, you can do that. Or more teal, you, all you have to do is adjust the blue slider a little bit. I think a little bit of magenta actually looks good. Likewise with yellows, you can make them more orange to the left or green to the right. I think this way is a bit more neutral. You can also play with the other colors depending on what's in your image. So let's take a look at the changes made by the color tool. Here's the before and after. Can you see it? It's a little bit more subtle than the last one, but you get to decide how far to go with all of these tools. If your image needs more help, just take the sliders farther. One thing I want to bring to your attention is if you are a Lightroom user, you may be wondering why I'm taking the image to Luminar to use HSL when there's a similar panel in Lightroom. The difference is that in Lightroom, you have to make those adjustments globally, meaning there is no way to apply it to just part of the image. When you use a mask in Lightroom, the HSL tool is not one of the options. So that's one of the reasons why I love using Luminar Neo as a plugin for Lightroom because I get the best of both worlds. I have a bonus tip for you that I'll tell you about at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But let's try this on another image. Before I save and close this one though, I'm gonna save it as a preset. To do that, just go to the action menu at the bottom and choose save as preset. I really wish that they didn't have these two things so close together because I have by accident reverted to the original instead of clicking save as preset. So be very careful when you're using this pull up menu. I'm just gonna call it night skyline. And because I've opened this from Lightroom, I just have to hit apply and it will take the image back into Lightroom so I can compare it with the original. Here they are side by side. You can see the left one was the Lightroom edit and the right one is the Luminar edit. Here's the next image that I want to work on and I'm going to apply the preset that I just saved to this one. So you'll find it under my presets and it's the one that I just called Night Skyline. Watch carefully as I click this because it's gonna happen fast. Here we go. Wow, look at the changes that it made with one click. There's the before and after. So all the things that I did to the New York skyline image applied equally as well to this one from Tokyo. That's because the color tones of night images are all similar. You've got blue and some form of yellow or orange. If we go into the edit panel, you can see there's the two tools. And if you want to make any changes, you just have to open them and adjust the sliders. Let's take a look at the color tool next. This is what it's doing. So it's darkening the sky, which is nice. The blue is getting a little oversaturated for my taste, so I'm going to lower that. And it's gone a little bit too purple. So I'm going to shift the blue back this way. So after just applying the preset and making a few tweaks, this image is finished. If you wanna add one more tool, go down to Enhance AI in the Essentials panel and just increase the sky enhancer. That will darken the sky. 
Be careful of this one though, because you'll notice that as I take it higher, it increases the saturation of the blue. So if you pull this one up to the right, make sure that you play with the saturation of the blues to bring that back in line. Okay, you wanna see the bonus tip that I promised you a minute ago? Here's another image that I've applied the same preset on once again. It's gone a little overboard, so I'm gonna dial the edits back a little bit then I'm going to apply one more final touch. First, I've adjusted the color harmony sliders so it looks more like this. I want to make sure that the highlights really sparkle. With the color tool, I adjusted the sliders to lower the saturation and brightness of the lights and bring out the sky colors a bit more. Now, let's go to the final step. We're going to do a sky replacement and choose one of my brand new skies. So I just finished creating a sky pack that has 14 aurora skies, six night skies, and five stormy skies. So the one that I want is in the night sky. I'm gonna try this one first. I think that looks pretty cool. What do you think? Here's a different image in the sky pack being used. Or how about something like this? This is actually a really believable scene because I photographed this in Canmore, Alberta in the Rocky Mountains where the Aurora typically shows up frequently in the winter. So I just wanted to show you the possibilities of what you can do using Luminar Neo to edit your night photography images. Have you used these tools on your night images before? If not, are you gonna give it a try now? Let me know in the comment area below. If you enjoy my teaching style and you'd like more step-by-step -step Luminar Neo instruction, check out my course on Luminar Neo. There's a link to it in the description area below. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click here now. Until next time, take care and we'll see you soon.